Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss with Raghunandan, who has been following up with us the Rafale deal. The recent exposes which Mr. N. Ram has done in the Hindu and also what has come in the wire with respect to some other aspects of the deal. Raghu, both these effectively question the role of quote unquote extra constitutional authority in terms of the negotiations that Mr. Ajit Doval, people in the PMO were negotiating with Dassault and the French government in parallel with what was the chief negotiating committee which had seven members led by somebody who has was appointed for that role under the defense procurement policy DPP 13. That this was in effect a parallel negotiations and this subverts authority of the basic negotiating team which was trying to settle the best price with the or the with the assault after the PM had already announced that we were going to go in for 36 Rafale aircraft. Now all of this does seem to substantiate what people have been saying that the PM had actually decided the price and was then involved in trying to get this agreement done on the basis of that price and there were parallel negotiations taking place also to make place for uh, Mr. Anil Ambani's company in, with, uh, with li li in lieu of the offsets and this was definitely a violation of DPP 13. Well, it has been clear from the outset uh, and you would remember we have been saying this from the time we started these discussions on the Rafale deal that there have been gross violations of the uh, due processes on the Rafale uh, case. In this instance, it's the bypassing of the negotiating committee. But the process of violation of the defense uh, uh, procurement procedures had started the day Prime Minister Modi made a public announcement uh, along with the French president for the new deal without having cancelled the old one, without the new deal having been approved by any of the committees according to the defense procurement procedure. So having started off by violating the procedure, it's understandable that you will have to constantly violate the procedure in order to get the deal that you want through uh, in the way that you want it to come uh, through and get the various committees in between to rubber stamp the decisions you have already taken. In this particular case, it seems that the defense ministry was not happy about no sovereign guarantees and no, uh, what is it, no bank guarantees. Yes. So neither the French government nor Dassault was willing to give a guarantee right. and uh, the, the French government then offered a letter of comfort yes. which has no legal binding consequence. Yes. Now Nirmala Sitaraman is now saying, oh well you know this is just a discussion and uh, this is like you know he's keeping an eye over the negotiations. Right. And this is no price consequence. Now, all of us know bank guarantees have price consequence. And to say this is no price consequences, shall we say, being less than uh, honest? See, the Raksha Mantri has continuously been doing this kind of uh, what I call high school debate st style of scoring points. Uh, it's never risen above that uh, level. In this case, the objection has never been about the Prime Minister's office making inquiries from the Defence Ministry. Let's say about progress of negotiations or something like that, uh, which even if that doesn't uh, amount to interference in decision-making processes, you may consider to be uh, understandable that ultimately it's going to come before the Cabinet Committee on Security, so it makes sense to see whether things are going along the line. But in this case, the issue is not that the PMO was following up with the Ministry. The issue is that the PMO was doing parallel track negotiations with the vendor. Uh, and and the, the French, French government. government. So that's a different ball game completely and what the Defence Ministry's file notings have shown is that uh, officials in the defense ministry were particularly concerned at these parallel negotiations and stated 
explicitly that the position of the negotiating team was being undermined. Mr. Mohan Kumar, the then secretary, had, had also, the, the deputy secretary uh, in the department had raised a note and the secretary then forwarded it to then Raksha Mantri uh, Manohar Parikar. And Manohar Parikar from the file notings clearly has dodged the bullet and has merely forwarded the letter to uh, uh, and told the defense secretary, you please negotiate it with the PMO. So taking himself out of the loop, essentially because he was never part of the loop in any case when uh, Prime Minister had made the uh, announcement. But he's gone a little more than that. He said, appears that it you appears are overreaching. That, exactly. So, but it's sort of right. neither here nor neither there kind of comment. There. So he has said, you sort it out along with the PMO. But the issue of the Prime Minister's office intervening, and even earlier in the public domain, it's come out that National Security Advisor Ajit Doval was intervening in it, having conversations with the uh, French. There is no doubt that the uh, negotiating committee would have been uh, undermined. undermined and under pressure when they go before the French negotiation to have somebody from there uh, nudging each other or telling them that, look, we've had discussions with your PMO and they are saying something different. So go along with that uh, process. And by the way, it was not only the defense ministry which was concerned about the lack of a, a, lack of a bank guarantee, it was also the law ministry which recorded its objection that uh, there is a problem in not having uh, a sovereign guarantee or a bank guarantee in this. The other part of this, and this again goes back to the uh, other controversial aspect of the deal. One of the issues have been price and uh, there have now been a more or less a clarity that the price was well above what UPA had negotiated. It came because of the pricing with respect to the so-called 11 India specific sure. modifications being made and this was loaded the entire price of this modifications are loaded on the 36 aircraft right. shooting their price well above what was negotiated earlier. Right. So leaving that part out there is also the other issue that comes up is the issue of Mr. Anil Ambari coming into this contract in lieu of HAL. Right. That's been the other major issue that That's has come right. up repeatedly. Now, of course, there are some attempts to talk about HEL and that this uh, particular accident that has yeah, happened. Yeah. But that's really extraneous to the Completely. issue. And uh, if one aircraft failure is an issue, then of course, Mr. Anil Lamani's uh, Reliance Communication yes. Company is right now failed in a much bigger way with 45,000 crores of NPS. Do you see also the parallel negotiation, in fact, as a nudge, nudge, wink or green signal or pressure to bring in Anil Ambani into the contract? Do you think that could be possible? See, look, the very fact that uh, even officials in the defense ministry, any official in government of India records serious objections to what has clearly been a... Uh, an agreement entered into at the highest level by the Prime Minister. It would take considerable provocation for a relatively junior uh, officer of the rank of Deputy Secretary to record a written objection in a fairly lengthy note saying there has been interference. So it wouldn't have been just one incident. There must have been several incidents of uh, discussions between the PMO and the French, Dassault or the government to have made this Deputy Secretary do this file noting. Uh, it wouldn't have been just a one-off case. And if it had been 10 odd incidents which came to the notice of the Deputy Secretary, how many more such incidents there would have been which had not come to the notice? Uh, various informal discussions, informal conversations uh, with them. You just don't know. But clearly, if there were these parallel discussions going on, between the PMO and uh, the French, it wouldn't surprise anybody to know that there were other uh, discussions taking place as well. Particularly when we know that the then French President Francois Hollande has given interviews to the press saying the uh, Anil Ambani part of this was a condition of the Indian uh, side for us to get the deal for uh, that sort. 
and wh and why on earth and why on earth would the French president say so if there wasn't something in it? In, in fact, it's interesting. The chief negotiating committee certainly didn't bring Anil Ambani into really play. Not. So this, if it has come from the Indian side, yes. now is might likely to have arisen more from the PMO side. Absolutely. And it's also interesting in Tori Joseph's book. Oh no, sorry. It's also interesting in the Josie Joseph's book on uh, the Feast of Vultures. Yes. He mentions about a uh, French diplomat and uh, she is supposed to have expressed very serious reservations of senior people in the, in the BJP. Uh, the conclusions, according to sources, are this is Amit Shah and uh, also Ajit Doval. And uh, it's also interesting, the same uh, criticism has been leveled by the controller of accounts in the Ministry of Defense, uh, the then controller of accounts that there was an interference by Ajit Doval yes. and Mr. Doval has no locus standi. That's right. The NSA has no locus standi Absolutely. in this negotiations at all. Absolutely. So this seems to again suggest that the people who have been arguing that Anil Ambani was brought in by the PMO, that his being present in Paris at the time is not an accident yep. when this deal was announced, that Mr. Olan's argument that Anil Ambani was brought in by the Indian side and fourth the Dassault who were not interested in Anil Ambani for quite some time and Anil Ambani has nothing to offer in terms of defense production he in fact incorporates this whole company only a few days before the deal all of this would seem to indicate that the other big part apart from the sovereign guarantee issue or the bank guarantee issue the other big part uh, and we are not talking about the price here. The other big part was really Adil Ammani. Well, of course, uh, just as we have been discussing about the violation of due process, uh, Anil Ambani coming in as a uh, high value offset partner, one of the highest of the different offset agreements signed by Dassault and its partners on that side with their Indian uh, counterparts, has always been such a surprise. Uh, nobody with experience of the aviation industry or with the manufacturing industry in general would find any reason why an international company of the reputation of Dassault would have picked Anil Ambani Defense to be an offset partner. There is no logic for it, either on technological grounds or on financial uh, grounds. It was fairly clear from the very outset that there must have been some extraneous considerations involved. And what we are hearing now seem to point fairly clearly to what these extraneous considerations were and who was pushing the case on that side. Thank you very much, Raghu, for being with us. Important questions still to, shall we say, dissect on the Rafale issue. I don't think we have seen the last Not of the exposés. And as the seed unfolds on what went behind the curtains for these three major issues in the Dassault deal, the Rafale deal, the price, the sovereign guarantee and the offset partner, we will continue to discuss with sure. you. Thank you very much. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Do keep watching us for Rafale and other issues.